Mathematics is sometimes referred to as the science of patterns. If you can find a pattern in something that you observe, then you can try to find the rule that describes the pattern. In this lesson, we are going to use the science of patterns to help us understand the quadratic function. We will use the parent graph of this function to see how changes in the formula affect changes in the graph. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how changes in the formula of a quadratic function affect the shape of its graph. So, where do we begin? We will start with a table of x and y values. I will give you the x values first. Each x value has a y value that fits a given rule. See if you can find the patterns in these x and y values. Starting from the first x value, the x value increases by 1 each time. Hmm, the y value decreases here by negative 3. They decrease here by negative 1, and here they increase by 1, and the increase here is 3. That does make some kind of pattern. Great! Now, can you use the pattern you found to find the next values of x and y in this table? Sure. 1 up from 2 is 3 for x. For y, I must make an increase of 5. That's 9. Correct. Well done. But this wasn't the only pattern in the table. Can you find another pattern? Hmm. Let me see. Okay, I think I've got it. If you only look at the y values, 0 has got a 1 on each side of it. Then the next column on each side has a 4 in it. In this case, we say the y values are symmetrical around 0. I think I can see another pattern. It looks like each x value is squared to get the y value. Look, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 0 times 0 is 0, and it even works here. 3 times 3 is 9. Hey, doesn't that give us the rule you were talking about? y is just x squared. You are quite right. We have found the rule that is generated by this table of values. It is y equals x squared. Now, if we were to plot each of these x and y values from the table onto a graph, what do you think the graph would look like? Well, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be a straight line graph, but I can't explain why. Okay, let me explain it for you. If you look at the table, the differences you found between the y values is not constant. So the rate of change is not constant. That tells us that the graph of this function cannot be a straight line. Do you think you could describe the rate of change for this table of values? I'll give it a go. Um, how about this? If you go from left to right with the x values, the y values go down to zero. Then they increase again. That's right. And do you have any ideas about what the graph would look like? Maybe it goes down and then up? You could be right. The best way to check it is to plot these points on the graph and see what it looks like. Here is negative 2, 4. Here is negative 1, 1. Here at the origin is 0 and 0. Then this is 1 and 1. And this is 2 and 4 here. These points give us the pattern of the graph. 
if we plot each point in between these points, we will find that we can join these points with a curve like this. We can also add arrows on the ends to show that this graph carries on for these x values on both sides of the y-axis. This is the graph for y equals x squared. So what do we call this type of graph? It is called a parabola or a quadratic function. We are going to use this graph of y equals x squared as the parent graph. We're going to use this parent graph to make generalizations about the effect that a and q have on all quadratic functions. A bit like we did for the linear functions. Yes, let's start with the formula. Quadratic functions all have a formula of the form y equals ax squared plus q. The parent graph of all quadratic functions has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0, which is y equal to x squared. Have a look at the parent graph again. Can you see that the graphs turn on the origin? The point 0, 0 is therefore the turning point for the graph y equals x squared. From the turning point, the arms go up, so there are no y values smaller than 0 on the parent graph. Let's see what graph we will get if we change the formula to y equals 2x squared. To find the graph, we are going to plot some points on it first. We will use the same x values that we did for the parent graph, y equals x squared. If x is negative 2, then x squared is 4, and 2 times x squared is then 8. And here, for x equal to negative 1, x squared is 1, and double that is 2. The other y values will be 0, 2, and 8. Let's take a closer look at this table of values and see if we can find the pattern. The rate of change between the x values is 1 again. Now the rate of change between the y values. Here it decreases by 6, then by 2, then it increases again by 2, then by 6. Do you see that the patterns of decrease and increase are similar to the patterns we found in the parent graph? What do you think the graph of this function will look like? I'm pretty sure it'll be a parabola. Let's check. We will plot the points onto the same axes as the parent graph so that we can compare graphs with each other. So now we can compare the graphs of y equals x squared and y equals 2x squared. Can you describe the difference between these two graphs? Well, the new graph is much thinner than the parent graph. Tell me more. Well, you could say that each of the points on the parent graph was pulled upwards onto the new graph. That is a good way to describe the change in the graphs. Well done. Let's look again at the stretch on the new graph. Here on the parent graph are the points negative 1, 1 and 1, 1. When A is 2, the corresponding points on the new graphs are negative 1, 2 and 1, 2. The Y values have doubled so the graph gets stretched. This is true for any other point on the new graph. Let's choose another graph and see if we can predict what it will look like. Can we make A in the new formula equal to a half and see what happens? That's a good idea. So let's try the function y equals half x squared. Help me with the table of values and then we'll plot the points. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There we have it. The graph of y equals half x squared looks like this. Let's compare this with a parent graph. Do you think you can do this? Sure. It still has a turning point of 0, 0. But now the arms are wider apart than on the parent graph. Let's mark negative 1, 1 and 1, 1 on the parent graph again. Do you see that on the new graph these points have become 1, a half and negative 1, a half what about the point 2, 4 on the parent graph? The y value here has become 2, so this point shrinks to 2, 2. The same will happen where x is negative 2. Negative 2, 4 becomes negative 2, 2. Now let's look at the formulae and see how the changes to them has changed the graphs and see if we can make a generalization. When the a value in the formula is 2, the new graph is thinner than the parent graph. The arms of the graph are closer together. The parent graph has been stretched upwards to make this graph. When the a value in the formula is a half, the new graph is fatter or wider than the parent graph. The parent graph has moved down closer to the x-axis. The arms are spread wider on this graph. We still need to see what happens to the graph if the A value is negative. How does the parent graph change if A is negative? Where will the new graph lie? Hmm, I'm actually not sure. Okay, I'll show you. We have made a table of values for y equals negative 1x squared here. And here I plotted the points for this graph. If I join them, this is what the new graph looks like. It's flipped over, but it's still the same shape as the parent graph. Yes, that is close. In mathematics, we call this flip a reflection. If I reflect the parent graph over the x-axis like this, the two graphs fall right on top of each other, so the reflection line is the x-axis. Right, so you saw that if we reflect the parent graph over the x-axis, the new graph we make has an a value of negative 1. So, if you know what y equals half x squared looks like, I mean how fat or thin it is, then we can tell how fat or thin y equals negative half x squared is. Great thinking. The reflected graph has the same shape as the positive graph, but it is upside down. Let me show you a few more of these graphs. Here is y equals 2x squared and y equals negative 2x squared. Here is y equals 3x squared and y equals negative 3x squared. Do you see how each graph with a negative a has the same shape as the graph with a positive value of that a? We started this lesson talking about patterns and we have found so many patterns in the formulae, in the tables and in the graphs. In this lesson we have explored eight different graphs, their formulae and their tables of values. Now it is your turn. Use what we have found to make a general statement about the effect of the a in the formula y equals ax squared plus q on the shape of the graph. In other words, what happens to the graph when a is positive or negative? What happens to the graph when a is greater than 1 or less than negative 1? What happens to the graph when a is a value between 0 and 1? or between negative 1 and 0. In this lesson, we have only looked at the influence of the a in the formula y equals ax squared plus q. We kept the q equal to 0. In the next lesson, we will see what happens to the parent graph if we change the value of q in the formula.